There have been several Pentecostal preachers and several so-called apostolic preachers who uh, emailed us as well as church organizations criticizing the message from last week hmm. because we spoke against racism. Can you imagine hmm. a so-called Christian, most of all a so-called preacher, criticizing me for speaking against racism and said that I am being political. Hmm. Let me just uh, say this. If you believe sin is only in one form, hmm. you're sadly mistaken. Evil, wickedness, injustice, sin, ungodliness, unrighteousness, unholy, that which is foul, that which God is against, come under every heading in every category. You have religious wickedness, you have social wickedness, and you have political wickedness. And do you know the Bible deals with all three? From a religious perspective, the Pharisees and the Sadducees often attack Jesus and try to bring the Jesus, the sayings of Moses, to justify themselves. Not that they were in full agreement with what Moses said, but even the scripture says how they sought to trap him. And Jesus knew what scriptures to go to to put the Sadducees and the Pharisees in place. And then they criticized me and said, well, you should not condone protests. One preacher went as far as saying, I never read where protest was in the Bible. <laughs> they have a very small understanding of what protest is. Every telecast that the truth of God have made from, from day one has been a telecast of protests. Protests mean to stand up against. One person can protest. I earnestly protested. Listen, listen at this. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 11 and at verse seven. Follow me in your Bible. Jeremiah chapter 11 and I'm at the seventh verse. Yes. For I earnestly protested unto your fathers. Say what? I earnestly, I earnestly protested, protested unto your fathers, unto your fathers in the day that I brought them up out of the land of Egypt. Do you hear this? Amen. So, protest is scripture. That's right. It depends upon how you protest. That's right. If I get some time, I'll show you where people assembled in protests against taxes. Mm. mortgages, the taking of land, mm. vineyards. If you don't believe me, if I don't get the time to go into it, viewers, if you get the chance, read the fifth chapter of the book of Nehemiah. Mm. My God, the prophet spoke about how they began to force the people and took the Jews and put them in slavery and took the brethren. So it is the right of anybody and everybody to protest and uh, do it lawfully. Right. One scripture says this, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. That's right. It is lawful to protest, but it is not expedient. It is not wise to be violent in the midst of your protests. There are many that uh, emailed and made comments and asked me, what do I think of the violence? Well, I'm against violence. I'm against the shedding of innocent blood. Do I understand why the violence took place? Yes. Do I condone it? No. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? If you suppress any people, then people will act out that suppression or that anger in all kind of ways. Now, another bishop criticized me and said, well, 
anger is not the way of God. Wait a minute. Anger is not the way of God. There's a scriptural anger and there's a fleshy anger. Now let me point out the scripture where God give us permission to be angry with the stipulation attached. In the book of Ephesians chapter five. Listen, listen. In Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter five and at verse 26. All right, listen at this. You turn Brother Williams up so I can hear him, please. Listen. In Ephesians chapter four and at verse 26. Ephesians 4, 26, the Lord says. Be ye angry and He sin gave not. us permission. Be angry. And sin not. But don't sin. That's right. So the protesters were the right to be angry, be frustrated, be outraged. Mm -hmm. But the sin, the mess, the blunder, it wasn't necessary to spray paint on walls. Right. It wasn't necessary to vandalize your own supermarkets. It wasn't necessary to invade nobody business and tear it up and burn it down. I saw an elderly black woman, angry, who had her own business. And she literally was verbally retaliating against the very phrase, Black Lives Matter. She believed Black Lives Matter. I mean, she's an elderly woman. She don't live through racism. But her anger was, her business was vandalized. The business that it took her years to build was vandalized, tore up. And her statement was, I'm a black woman. If black lives matter, why would you destroy my black owned business? Now I wanna to talk to all of my brothers and sisters. And when I say brothers and sisters, I'm talking about every race under the sun. Black, white, brown, yellow, red. And if you manage to come in the other color, you too. Protests around the world. I encourage everybody around the world to protest against the evil and the injustice of your country without violence. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? America, look at the type of president you have in the White House. He's itching to put the dogs on you. He wants the military out and he don't want the military to use rubber bullets. Learn from your history. In the 1950s, in the 1960s, when policemen came out and when military came out, wasn't no rubber bullets used. They shot you down in the street like dogs. They took military hardware and blew your flesh to pieces. Children was killed. Now, brothers and sisters, if you young black people or white people or brown people is going to burn down churches, then that make you no better than when the Ku Klux Klan was burning churches in the 60s. That don't make you no better when racist groups now bomb different black churches throughout America. Jesus says it this way, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom. What does that mean? Yes. I want to certify as I go now. In the book of St. Matthew chapter five. Follow me in your Bible. Matthew chapter five and we're at verse 20. I want every listener to get this in Matthew five and 20. For I say unto you. Jesus said, I say to you. That except your righteousness. Righteousness means doing that which is right. That's right. Doing that which is right. Amen. Some of the truth of God folk was down there protesting. Fine. Amen. I received letters from quite a bit of truth of God viewers that Pastor Jennings, we were down here uh, from different states protesting. I got some letters from out of England, from Europe. Truth of God viewers was on the street protesting. I got some emails from the Netherlands. Truth of God viewers protesting. Jesus
Jesus said, except your righteousness exceed, except your right doing, except your right deeds be above. Shall exceed the shall righteousness. Shall be better than, shall be greater than. The righteousness the of the scribes and Pharisees. Of the scribes and Pharisees. Ye shall in no case. Ye shall in no case. Enter into the kingdom of heaven. Let's talk about this. Amen. And break it down plain. Amen. If I'm going to charge a white group and they are found guilty of burning down one of our churches and then black men come and burn down another one of our churches, what group is better? That's right. That's right. What group is righteous? That's right. In that deed, what group is righteous? You can't say that a black man is justified because he wasn't burning buildings down as long as white folk. Burning and losing property is burning and losing property. That's right. I want to say, well, how can you justify that, Pastor Jennings? The Bible says this. All unrighteousness. All unrighteousness is sin. Is what? Is sin. In 1 John chapter 5 Glory and verse 17. God. And first John chapter five. And verse 17. Verse 17. All unrighteousness. How much of it? All unrighteousness. All things that are not right is sin. Is wrong. Is sin. All unrighteousness. All of it. That's right. That's right. The American government for years have been racist. The American government for years have been prejudiced. The American uh, government for years have taken advantage of people of color, all people of color. Oh, yeah. We were never on the agenda for equality. That have never been the mentality of the so-called founding fathers. That's right. Because the so-called founding fathers were slave owners themselves. That's right. And you cannot own a slave and look at me as equal to you. Amen. So when you put together a, a document, I am not included in the prosperity of what this document promised because I am not looked at equally as the ones that put together the document. That's right. So young people, protest, fine. Stop vandalizing the properties. If you're going to destroy your neighborhood, have enough respect for your neighborhood to go back and clean up what you destroyed. That's right. That's right. Think of it. You got old people who may shop at that one particular corner store. You burn it down. You ransack it. And now old people got to find other ways to try to find basic needs. Amen. Amen. The Bible says it this way. Look not every man, glory to God, Amen. on his own things, but, on the things, but of on the things of others. So regardless of how angry you become, consider That's right. the years that man worked to get that business all the, off the ground. Consider the years that woman sweat to get her business off the ground. And then ask yourself, if you had a business, would you want someone to do to you what you've done to them? Would you want someone to burn down your mother business? Because what happened, brothers and sisters and viewers, the subject that was on the table was the murder of Mr. Floyd, the unjustifiable hanging of Mr. Floyd, the unjustifiable death of Mr. Floyd. But what happened is when you begin the riot that made the media shift. That's right. The attention That's right. off of what the media should be looking at, police brutality, and the media begin to focus on what Trump wanted them to focus on, and that was the destruction of the property. That's right. That's right. 
Listen to the old man. Oh, Pastor Jenner, you don't want to stand. Oh, yes, I do. If somebody, listen, if somebody would murder one of my sons, I will eye, my flesh will want an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a head for a head, and a life for a life. My flesh will want it. But my reaction has to be according to the principle of scripture wherein the way I deal with you, I please God simultaneously. That's right. That's right. Do you understand? In the book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 28 and verse 2. Ecclesiasticus 28 and 2 says. Forgive thy neighbor. Forgive thy neighbor. The hurt that he hath done unto thee. Sometimes that's hard. It's oh. easy to read it. Oh, yes. But the pen, what the neighbor done to you, is hard to put that into motion. So many times you have to ask God to help you. That's right. I want to say to all politicians and chief commissioners and captains and sergeants, again, as I said last week by God's permission, whenever white brothers and sisters in the 50s and 60s was with uh, black brothers and sisters and protesting and marching, they always labeled white people who was on the side of black people, they called them nigger lovers. Yeah. A bigot done the same thing to white people who was supporting and in back of black people of what they done to black people. I believe it was in the area of Mississippi, if I'm not mistaken, back in the 60s, when there were some young people, black and white, uh, who was protesting. And uh, the Ku Klux Klan caught all of them. I believe it was three whites, one black. And the Ku Klux Klan caught all of them, murdered all of them, and threw their bodies in a ditch until the FBI had to come down in uh, Mississippi or Alabama, one of the two, and then finally found them. A bigot hate you if you don't have the mindset he or she has. That's right. I say that to say this. When it came over the news that a 75-year-old white brother was pushed down by the Buffalo police. And when that man head hit, let's remember, 75 years old, this man was raised in the atmosphere of hatred and prejudice. But the white policeman pushed down a white man who was protesting on the side of people of color. That's right. A senior citizen. That's right. And when blood began to spill from his wound, one white officer went to help him and the other one just motioned, bleeding down there. And all of them just marched over them, over him, like their Gestapo. That's right. Just ignore them, which goes to show you that their mentality to control and to fulfill the words of Trump to dominate was more valuable and more precious than the life of a senior citizen? That's right. That's right. Viewers, this is nothing new. No. It is only new to young people in their time who did not get a chance to experience it but only watched it on eyes of the prize that's right on the history channel that's right me and my wife raised our seven kids watching eyes on the prize because we wanted them to have a knowledge of the past yeah. but it is a true saying if you don't correct the past and have knowledge of the past, you will not have the necessary skill how to deal with the present. But have you not noticed the past is the present? That's right. That's right. People have asked, how can we get rid of racism? Hmm. Well, let me pose a question to the world. Have you ever asked yourself, how did racism last so long? Yeah. How did racism can't become so strong? That's right. How did racism become so believable? 
How did racism become so convincing that people were and still are willing to die to keep it? Yeah. Yeah. How did racism become so prevalent? What was used to keep it here? How did it spread so rampant? How was it presented to be so convincing? Viewers, the answer to all those questions come under one heading, religion. Religion has been the institution of racism for years. What do you mean? Whether you're black, white, brown, yellow, or red, every color on the spectrum wants to be and have some form of religious belief. The Bible is used right, and the Bible is used wrong. This book of scripture, which is the words of Almighty God, but even though it's the words of God, the words of God can be placed in the hands of Satan. What then notwithstanding? And when it's placed in the hands of Satan, the words of God become diluted and misrepresented. In other words, this. You can take a clip. A reporter can interview a person who's not racist. And then that uh, reporter can edit the interview. And when he or she done editing the interview, can make the one that's being interviewed look like they're saying something they ain't never said. It's a matter of taking out, moving words around, editing, and making the good appear evil and make the evil appear good. Do you understand? That's what evil, seducing, ungodly, unrighteous men done. Let me just give you two scriptural examples. Give me the book of Genesis. When uh, the son of Jacob saw his father. Let's get that quickly. And there's another scripture come to mind. Jacob, uh, you had Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And uh, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, I beg your pardon, the sons of Noah. Not the sons of Jacob, the sons of Noah. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. In the book of Genesis. This scripture right here, religion and scholar. And in the New Testament, I want obey your masters. Right. I want these two scriptures right. that religion have used for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years to promote racism. Right. Listen. In the book of Genesis chapter 9 and at verse 19. Yes. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. These are the three sons of Noah, and by them the whole earth was populated. And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. Yes. And he drank of the wine and was drunken. Uh -huh. And he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham the father of Canaan saw Ham, the Ham the father of Canaan saw his father and told his two brethren without. Yes. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders uh -huh. and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward. Then what? And they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah woke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. He realized what his youngest son done to him. Genesis 9, we're at verse 25. Listen good. And he said, Cursed be Canaan. Noah cursed. His son, he said, "Cursed be Canaan, a servant, a of, servant servants, of servants, shall he be shall unto his brethren, unto your brethren." And he said, "Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant, and God shall enlarge Japheth, and he will dwell in the tents of Shem, and and Canaan shall be his servant, and and Noah lived after the flood three hundred and fifty years." It is this scripture that religion have used for years, especially white ministers, whether they were Pentecostal, apostolic, non-denominational, Catholic, Protestant, Episcopalian, and say it is God's will 
and it was God's will for all black people to be less than nothing and to be brutalized by white folk because God prophesied it through Noah. No, he did not. No. No, he did not. No. And then they take the scripture in the New Testament where it says, Obey your master. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, we're at verse 1. Quickly, son. Like, let as many servants as are under the yoke have their own masters worthy of all honor. Let that, as many masters that are under the worthy, yoke. Worthy of all honor. Worthy of all honor. That the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. What is it? And they that have believing masters. They that have, notice the language of the book. They that have believing masters. Let them not despise them. Don't despise them. Because they are brethren. They are brothers. But rather do them service. And what? Because they are faithful and beloved. Now, that wasn't talking about do them service the way the slave master was no. doing service. No. The slave master raped your grandmother, had your grandmother, mother, daughters, granddaughters pregnant at the same time. That's right. That's right. Many times he would have sex with the man's wife while the man was there. Force him to watch it. That's right. That's right. Use fear, scare tactics to intimidate. That's right. So, what happened? Here we quickly. Drop what you're doing. Go in the corner and bring me one of those pictures that we had earlier. Quickly, please. I want to deal with the whole method. Just one picture. They use the Bible and lie on the Bible and say, God, God, Jesus, the Christ, wants you to be ignorant. God made you to be less than us. God made you to serve us. Now, if this is constantly being told to people for years, where they live, just said it there, for years in a church and you're constantly told this all your life, what happened? You become mentally and emotionally programmed. So now, in religion, they put this in your church and said, this is your savior. That's right. They say, this is God. That's right. And you're supposed to bow to your slave master because your slave master represents God. So they hold this picture. They know it's a lie, but the objective is make God white, make the slave master white, and when you bow to your slave master or bow to white folk, it took the fight out of you, out of you because you thought you was doing God's will. That's right. That's right. Exhort Churches service. have done this. That's right. That's why you see it all on the stained glass, all pictures in your Bible, everywhere. And the churches are afraid to speak out against this poison. Racism has used religion like a surfer, used water on a surfboard. And they've took it from religion to religion, to church, to church, to church, to church, to church. You would find many, many, many years ago that if a white group went inside of any church, and if that church had a balcony, you were sent to the balcony. In church, a black man couldn't use the same bathroom. In church, a black man couldn't sit at the same table. But yet, they say they're Christians. Let us remember, the Ku Klux Klan also declared themselves to be Christians. That's right. That's right. Didn't they? That's right. So Trump, he stands in front of a church. Amen. Hold a Bible he don't believe in. Right. And then people feel as though he done 
something big or something great. They said this was a great moment <laughs> in history. The Amen. president held the Bible. Amen. That don't mean nothing. That's right. Do you know even the devil quote the Bible? That's right. Give me the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 4. Chapter 4. I'm going to start at verse 1. Trump hold the Bible as if he done something big. The Ku Klux Klan has been holding the Bible for years. The Ku Klux Klan will burn a cross. Bigots and those that were racist held Bibles for years. Holding the Bible don't mean nothing. Believing what's in there and practicing what's in there, then you will get some credit. Holding it don't mean nothing. nothing. An atheist can hold the Bible. Listen. Matthew chapter 4, we'll start at verse 1. Follow me. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Jesus was led up by the Spirit to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days, When he days fasted 40, 40 days, nights, the devil came to him. And when the tempter came to the him. The devil came to him. He said, if thou be the Son of God. thou be the Son of God. Commanded these stones command to be made these bread. Commanded these stones to be turned to bread. But he answered and said, it is written. Jesus responded to Satan and said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. Thou man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city. Then the devil took Jesus up to the holy city. And setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. And what did the devil say? And saith unto him, if thou be the Son of God. If you be the Son of God. Cast thyself down. And. For it is written. Here is the devil now quoting the Bible to Jesus. That's right. Satan. That's right. Says to it Jesus. It Satan says to Jesus. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God. It's written. It is written. It's written. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. So Trump standing holding the Bible was a dumb moment. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Yeah, it was a dumb moment. That's right. It was a moment of buffoonery. <laughs> it was a moment of hypocrisy. That's right. It was a moment where God was not represented at all. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? That's right. Read what you have, sir. Matthew 23, and I'm at verse 14. Says what? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. What are they? Hypocrites. Hypocrites. For ye devour widows' houses. Ye devour widows' houses. And for a pretense. And for pretending, for pretending, for pretending, you're pretending. What do they do? Make long prayer. Amen. So Trump held the Bible. Yeah. Didn't know what to do with it. That I <laughs> That's right. That's right. Didn't know what to do with it. That's right. Read it. Read it. Understand it. And obey it. Amen. If you're not going to respect and obey it, yeah. then what good is trying to advertise it? Right. To try to make people believe that you are a believer. Listen, you have believers and you have disciples. That's right. A believer and a disciple are two different things. Yes. You can believe something, but you're not a disciple. That's right. What do you mean? You can believe what the Bible says, but you're not a follower of it. Right. You don't practice it. You believe it by knowing it's true, but you're not ready to submit yourself and obey it and govern your life according. For I say unto you. Listen. Back in Matthew 5 and verse 20. I say unto you that accept your righteousness. Glory to God. Amen. Accept your right deeds be above. Shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. So you churches. You churches. I have said before and I say again. Take this racist image out of your church. That's right. Take that racist image 
out of your church. They took the counterfeit of his vices from far. They took the counterfeit of his vices from far. Of his vices from far. And made an express image of a king. They made an express image of a king. Whom they honored. Who they honored. To the end that by this their forwardness they might flatter him that was absent. You think God is flattered? You trying to make him white? Others trying to make him black? Others trying to make him brown? Leave color out of God. That's right. When it come to God, don't try to add color to him. That's right. The Bible says in John 4, 24, God is a spirit. spirit. What kind of spirit? Holy spirit, sanctified, righteous spirit. That's right. He's a God that whites can bow to, blacks can bow to, brown can bow to. God don't look at the color of your skin. That's right. One thing I say about the death angel, he's not a racist. No. Is he? No, no. Oh, that's, I, I keep telling the folk, there's not a racist death angel that ever exists, nor is the grave prejudice. That's right. Nor when a corpse die, is there racist worms. Amen. Those worms cover that body of the black, brown, and red and consume you over a long period of time and eat the flesh off your bones. That's right. All right, son, let's go back to where we were. Back in Matthew 5 and verse 20. Follow me. For I say unto you that except your righteousness. So the unrighteous act of prejudice and racism got on the backs of religion and many bigots. I can't say all white people. That's why I have to say bigots. Only those that are racist bigots have taught people of color for years that you have less than, you are less than. At one time, even in America, that was, there was a law that forbid people of color to learn how to read. That's right. That was law in America. That's right. That it was wrong, illegal. <laughs> it was, think of it. Here in America, there was a time that it was illegal for people of color to read. That goes to show you how bigots was afraid of you understanding. Bigots did not want you to comprehend. You know how to deal with the matter when you understand the situation better. You know how to handle that matter. You know how to handle that person. You know how to go about fulfilling that deed. That's right, that's right. Now you young people, Black Lives Matter, yes. Prove to yourself how much they matter. Amen. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? Stop murdering among yourselves. That's right, that's right. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Right. Young man, don't you carjack another car. Right. Why? Black Lives Matter. Right. Young man, don't you get another girl pregnant and she ain't your wife? Why? Black lives matter. And if that black life matter, her black body should matter enough for you not to spill seed and she ain't your wife. That's right. That's right. Black lives matter? Don't you slap the black woman. Go ahead. Black lives matter? Don't you abuse the black female. That's right. Black Lives Matter, stop selling drugs in your neighborhood, killing black children. My son, if sinners entice thee, the drug dealer, mm -hmm. if you're going to protest against police brutality, then you have to protest against the brutality of the drug dealer. Are you listening? That's right. The policemen take a back. And as I saw on the news, in one place, they actually drove their trucks and mowed people down. In another place, they took their horses. In fact, I was watching this morning the news live from Australia, where the indigenous people was in parts of Australia protesting by the thousands. And the police got on the horse and just rode through the people to trample over them. Use anything. If a person can take a car 
and use it as a weapon of murder and be prosecuted. Why is the police not prosecuted and charged and thrown in jail when they commit the exact same crime? That's right. That's right. Are you listening? If a policeman can shoot down a person who's innocent, then that policeman should go to jail and serve the same time in the same prison, That's right. just like anybody else. That's right. If he use a baton, a gun, a horse, a car, anything, if he gonna take an innocent life and get off the hook, then the government of America is hypocrites yeah. to charge someone else with murder who done the exact same crime as a police officer. That's right. And this is where it's so much anger yeah. because the Bible says this, he that have respect a person, yeah. what do you mean? He that have favoritism yeah. commits sin. You mean to tell me a policeman can rape a girl and get off scotch-free and a black man when he rapes somebody, he get a hundred years? True, that's right. A white officer rape somebody, he get off scotch-free? A black man rapes somebody, or if a black man is accused of rape, he starts serving time, and then by the time he put in 50 years, then they find out he's innocent. That's right. After he'd been there already for a half a century, That's right. since he was 12 or 13. That's right. That's right. Black Lives Matter, respect your elders. Yeah. Black Lives Matter, when that old woman, that old man is on the subway or on the bus stop, standing. Get up out your chair. Let them sit down. Because the age they are, you hope to be. You just can't throw a pitch, a slogan, and give it a half meaning. Now, I know many are uh, not going to like me for this, and if you know Pastor Jennings, you know I don't care. You cannot make a slogan and give it a half meaning. Black life means black existence. The existence of a human being should be valuable. You children, Stop disrespecting your black mother, yeah. or your white mother, or your brown mother, or your yellow mother. Stop wanting to party all night when your parents gave you a curfew. You young black men, brown men, yellow men, stop disrespecting your body and shooting it up with heroin, snork, snorking cocaine. Yeah. Pull your pants up. Amen. Black Lives Matter, let your black behind matter enough that you hide it down in your pants. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? That's right. That's right. The word of God says what? In the book of Proverbs chapter one and at verse 10. I had one preacher said to me, he said, you've got to be the most outspoken man I've ever seen in my life. Well, I'm not afraid. Right. When God said, let us make man, that's what God made me a man. Oh, yeah. I'm not a half man. I'm not part man. Amen. My wife did not marry three fifths of a man. That's right. She married a full blooded, thorough, complete man. I'm not trying to be a man. God said, let us make man. I don't read where God struggled when he made it. No. So there's no need for me to struggle with my manhood. That's right. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Mm. If mm. black lives matter in every way, respect the life of your own neighborhood. Yeah. Clean up your neighborhood. Yeah. It ain't no, when I came up, we scrubbed our steps. That's where I was raised. We, our, we had block cleanup. 
The block captain will come out seven in the morning yelling, block clean up, everybody move your cars. That's right. Block clean up. That's right. It wasn't like the suburbs, you know, where the street trucks would come up and shoot water. No, we weren't the street truck. Amen. We had to take our water hose. Or we had to turn on the fire hydrant. Respect your neighborhoods. Respect each other. Don't just vote for a politician who run in black churches and say something good. And then that politician turn out to be no better than the liar that held the position that he's running for. That's right. Stop selling your dignity for political pictures. Stop selling out. That's right. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Listen. Proverbs chapter 1 and I'm at verse 10. The word says, My son, if sinners entice thee. My son. If sinners entice thee. If sinners entice thee. Consent thou not. To the Black Life Organization and all other organizations who's participating in this uh, protest. When you see men, women, boys of, or girls of any color deliberately doing something to excite a riot or to bring about confusion in a cause of peace, get rid of him. That's right. Get rid of her. That's right. Because you have infiltrators. What do you mean? Even in religion, you have infiltrators who don't have the word of God at heart, who don't have the love of God at heart, but will infiltrate that religion, infiltrate that school to bring about confusion, to get the program off course That's right. in another direction that you don't want to go. That's right. If something is good, there will always be something no good coming among the good. Is that Bible? Oh my God, the Bible said there was war in heaven. Yeah. It is written there's none good but one and that one is God. Who come among God in heaven? Satan. That's right. No good. What happened? War break out in heaven. We'll let you know this. God was no pushover. Yeah. God was not going to allow Satan to display his arrogance, his stubbornness, his rebellion, and take over eternity. To the degree Satan was so determined, he would not go down without a fight. So the Bible says war in heaven. that there was war. war. The war. Bible says. And there was war in heaven. Let's read this. In the book of Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12 and at verse 7. Follow me. And there was war in heaven. War is confusion. God is not the author of confusion. Anytime there's war, that means someone is determined to get their agenda pushed, get their agenda fulfilled, even at the expendable of lives of others. That's right. They will kill, they will murder, they will shed blood. That's right. They don't want peace. No. One scripture says when they uh, cry peace, war break out. If they say, come with us. Listen. Back in Proverbs chapter 1 and at verse 11. If they say, come with us. Let us lay wait for blood. Let us lay wait for blood. Let us look proudly for the innocent without cause. What? Let us swallow them up alive as the grave. Uh -huh. And whole as they, those that go down into the pit. Young people. Amen. That are watching and listening. When you in these protests and someone want to encourage you, let's burn down that house. Let's burn down that property. Let's rave that property. Let's spray paint it. Let's vandalize it. Mm -hmm. Consent thou Here, not. Do what? Consent thou not. Here's a man got murdered. What in the world do stealing sneakers? Go ahead, go ahead. Got to do with a dead man. That's right. Here's a man got murdered. What do Rite Aid, Walgreens, That's right. CVS, and vandalizing those stores That's right. got to do with the murder of Mr. Floyd. That's what right. do your neighborhood supermarket that you burn down and spray painting religious buildings, what do that got to do with the death of Mr. Floyd? And what do that have to do 
with the life of a black man. That's right. That's right. Apostle Paul said, I put all things in order when I come. That's right. And listen clearly at what the scripture says. Proverbs chapter 1 and at verse 10. You right. parents! Mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter, you fathers, take care of your children. That's right. Stop deserting your children. That's right. Stop abandoning your children. That's right. Black Lives Matter, you women, then stop trying to take somebody else's husband. And you husband, stop trying to take somebody else's wife. Why? Black Lives Matter. That's right. That's right. Black Lives Matter, you preachers, stop trying to Preach. knock up the black women in your church, getting them pregnant. Amen. And then you pay them off to keep them quiet. That's right. Am I right? That's right. Why? Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Amen. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Wonderful. So the slogan is powerful. The quotation is correct. And the slogan should be said, but it should never be used just when a black man is murdered by a white man. You young people, if life is more valuable than your car, than your rims, Value the life of your daughter enough and your son enough when he or she is in your car that they can hear after they get out the car. They didn't go deaf because you blast your speaker so loud until your car vibrating at a red light. That's right. Until the person who don't even have his radio on, he checking his car. Amen. Because his car vibrating so intensely He's not sure whether his radio is off. That's right. That's right. We have a lot of changes to make. Oh, yeah. A lot. Pastor Jenny, do you believe there will be change? A little. There will be a little. Our fathers and grandfathers and grandmothers have marched the streets of America, died beaten, bloodshed, in prison. When these businesses are racist, don't burn them down, just simply mobilize and don't buy none of their products. That's, right. That's all you got to do. You don't have to use bombs. In the, I believe, the late 50s, when Martin Luther King them first organized against the bus system. Right. They didn't burn down the bus depot. That's right. They didn't set no bus on fire. The majority, who they called the minority, but they wasn't the minority, the black folk was the majority. They stopped riding. Yeah. Then the blacks organized among themselves yeah. and looked out for each other. They all became Uber. Yeah. They all became Lyft. Right. They all drove each other to work, to church, to jobs. Yeah. And the bus system had to bow. Yeah. Any company, any business, that refuse to patronize people of color. What do you mean? I don't mean hire one black man and one black woman and then say I'm integrated. That's not integration, that's tokenism. That's right. That's not integration. Integration, there's a full acceptance of all people of color. Are you listening? Right. So if there's a business or a company, regardless of who they are, let us remember, no business get rich without the public patronizing them. That's right. No business can even survive without the public patronizing them. Right. So you organizations, 
Reach back in your history books. Get some lessons from the past and see how you can utilize them in the present. That's right. Say what you want about Martin. His mythology was strong yeah. until he brought an entire bus company to their knees. That's right. I am not going to force my way in a restaurant and make you force to feed me. Because if I do that, I don't know what I'm eating. Amen. No, I'm not going to force myself in your restaurant and force you to feed me because I don't know what you're eating. But if people of color, along with white brothers and sisters, truly value life, don't patronize no business, big or small, don't buy none of their product, don't buy none of their merchandise, none of it. Amen. Don't spend your money, don't buy their product, don't order online. No racist company should be patronized. Hear me, world? Amen. No racist company should be patronized. Amen. None of them. Amen. And if any of you, you see a lot of these church people so busy jumping and shouting and speaking in tongues. Hey, listen, if you are not, when you are truly godly, then you are against all wrong. That's right. I don't believe in fighting on one front. I believe in fighting on all fronts. All fronts. That's why I'm so glad God gave me your big mouth. <laughs> Amen. And I'm not afraid to That's use right. it by God's permission. That's right. So I encourage all of my young brothers and sisters, middle aged and old, all around the world, protest with the absence of violence. Give me the scripture again. Mm -hmm. Be ye angry. Yes. I want to close out with that Amen. and encourage my brothers and sisters on this scripture right here. Back in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26. Ephesians 4, 26. 26. Be ye angry. Be angry. And sin not. Don't be violent. That's right. Be angry. Don't vandalize. Right. Be angry. Don't brutalize. Be angry. Don't burn down nobody's property. Be angry. Don't destroy no businesses. Be angry and don't spray paint nobody else's property. Right. Be ye angry. And sin not. That's what the word of God says. Yes, yes. Don't patronize no racist company. No racist business. Mm -hmm. Any company that even use racist propaganda. Any company that use any form of commercials to degrade people of color, to downsize people of color, to try to legitimize their racist behavior and their racist thinking. Thank you. Right. Don't patronize them. Don't patronize. If your own stock in any bigot company, pull your shares out. Amen. I don't care if it's a bank. Amen. That bank is racist. Pull out your accounts. If your business got an account in a racist bank, pull it out. Amen. If you're a church and your money's just sitting in a bank and here that bank is racist, pull it out. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Anytime people of color got a purchasing power that exceed in the billions, please don't be that ignorant and somebody can convince you that you are beneath them. That's Your right. purchasing power is in the billions. That's right. Use it. That's right. Stop abusing it on foolishness. Yeah. Stop abusing it on drinking, yeah. partying, smoking, yeah. gambling. That's right. Use it wisely. That's right. Every police precinct in America and the world, as I said last week, any police officer that been at these, working for these precincts for a number of years, that officer who's racist or a bigot, everybody know who he is. Yeah. Because he's been there long enough. He's going to have a long list of complaints. Yeah. And the reason why he's going to keep working is because those complaints are going to be ignored. Yeah. The truth of the matter is this. There should not have to be violence and burning and looting and spray painting and murder for this subject to be dealt with. Amen. Because racism been here. Oh, yeah. 
It's nothing new. That's right. It's been here for years. That's right. Repent, human family. Repent. Surrender. Right. Be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Let God fill you with the, his divine spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost. Have a mind to obey his divine order, his divine will. Remember, be ye angry. Ye angry. And sin not. Amen. Get this out of your church. That's right. Get it out of your homes. Right. Bible ain't never said God looked like this. No. Bigots taught you that. That's right. They keep you under their feet. That's right. That's Bigots right. taught you that. Right. So you can look up to him. Yeah. Bigots taught you that. Oh, yeah. So he can beat you. Yeah. Whip you. Rape you. Rob from you. Right. Burn your house down. Bigots taught you. I come along with the Bible to let you know this is sedition. That's right. This is wicked. Wickedness. This is a lie yeah. that the devil used yeah. to brainwash. Yeah. This is religious propaganda. That's right. This is religious Propaganda. Get it out your church. Get it out your house. Take that trash and send it back to hell from where it's come from. And let's follow the true order and the true commandment of God. Tune in again at 4 o'clock. We'll come back live. Or we'll take God with God everlasting word. Thank you for listening, brothers and sisters.